Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Um, we have some interesting questions here, I think, uh, and I'd be most interested to hear what your answers might be um, if you have time to ask any questions um, after I finish speaking, or indeed during uh, my, my comments. There's the title. The, this is the question. Um, is a minority status inevitable for what you might call indigenous populations in the developed world? That is, the people who you traditionally associate uh, as living in places like Britain, the United States, uh, Western Europe, uh, and all the rest. Um, at the moment, uh, this seems to be implicit in, in, in current trends in migration um, and, in, uh, and in the birth rate. Uh, at least in Western Europe, uh, at least in the Anglosphere, not uh, in Eastern Europe, not uh, in East, East Asia so far. And this arises out of a number of factors all happening at the same time. Um, domestic birth rates are quite low and are falling at the moment. Um, there's a gap between the birth rates of immigrants on the one hand uh, and of uh, the natives, if I can call it that, if you don't mind being called natives, uh, on, on the other. Um, migration is high uh, and rising and shows no signs whatever of, uh, of, um, of going, going uh, uh, in, in, into reverse. It seems to be perpetual. Um, the foreign origin population is, in most parts of Western Europe, is now 20% or more and rising. Uh, in the UK, anyway, uh, there's no articulate uh, political opposition to it at all. The Conservative Party, which has made various prom promises about migration, is clearly run by economic liberals um, who are interested in um, uh, finding what uh, employers want and giving it to them and have little, little concern for the long-term consequences of what they're encouraging. Um, and the elite is, generally speaking, indifferent to this, if not indeed uh, approving of the changes which are taking place. Furthermore, I think there's a, a considerable cohort shift in opinion uh, that while uh, people of, of, of my age and um, maybe some of your age as well uh, regard these trends with some alarm, um, in, in the young, younger generation there is much more uh, indifference or even approval and acceptance of what's going on. So, let's see. So what uh, is uh, an important answer to this? Uh, you may recall Mr. Javid's rather striking comment, um, and I think many people, especially young people, would e echo that. And I'll try to return to that question, so what, um, uh, later on in, in my comments. Let me address these different elements uh, one by one. Low fertility, uh, migration, uh, population change. Low fertility is is is. Um, throughout the whole uh, of the world, there's not a single developed country where the birth rate is adequate to replace the population in the long run. Um, in East Asia, this is so low as to be an existential threat, um, as we will see, leading to all kinds of excitable um, forecasts of, of extinction. Uh, and the birth rates are not, are not just low, but they're also falling, generally speaking. Um, and this is a real change. If you look at the whole world, you find that um, most countries in the world have now got birth rates below the level uh, required to replace the population. The, the majority of people in the world live in countries where this is the case, um, and it has some surprising members, uh, this group of countries with low birth rates, uh, Bangladesh, Brazil, uh, China we know, Iran, Indonesia, Mexico, India, uh, Turkey. Uh, all have birth rates which, which are low and showing no signs of increasing at the time being um, and um, will lead to, to eventual uh, population decline if, uh, without migration. Uh, in, in some cases, population decline has already arrived. Most of Eastern Europe, um, uh, uh, Japan, uh, many countries in the Far East. This is the worst case. These are the, um, the rich countries of East Asia, um, uh, Japan, Korea, uh, Singapore, Taiwan, um, the, the so-called little dragons. And you can see from the graph that the birth rate has been hovering around one 
um, uh, in some countries now for, for, for two or three decades, and in the case of, of, of uh, Korea, it is now down to 0.7. Uh, that, that means to say that the average woman is producing 0.7 children, if you can imagine what a 0.7 of a child is, um, and, and that's been the case for some time. There's no immediate sign of any recovery. This is causing considerable alarm and despondency, as you might imagine. Um, here is the most pessimistic graph I've ever seen on any official website. This is from Japan rather than Korea. It's not dissimilar. Um, the, uh, the red line is the um, uh, proportion of, 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 of people, or rather the ratio of people of working age to people of, um, of retired age. Um, that uh, given the birth rate being constant and the death rate being constant, goes down, worsens, and then, then remains constant. It doesn't go on being worse and worse and worse, although it's pretty bad. The blue line uh, is the population size. Uh, and this, this projection, uh, this official projection, uh, shows uh, the, the population of Japan declining from uh, about 130 million uh, at the moment down to the year 2000. It, uh, 3000. It doesn't go beyond the year 3000 because the year 3000, according to this projection, is when the last Japanese will, will throw in the towel and there won't be any more Japanese at all. Um, Korea beats Japan by a short head. Its extinction is threatened by 2750, according to official projections. I don't believe either of these. Um, uh, that's an awful long time in demography. Lots and lots of things can happen. Um, but nonetheless, that is the implication of their current trends, however transient they may be. Another area of uh, low, low um, fertility is southern Europe for rather different reasons. Um, Greece, Italy, Portugal, Spain um, all, all have these, these low birth rates out. They're slightly above one child per woman, but not that much. And they show no sign of increasing and recently have started to edge downwards again. This has got nothing to do with the Pope, by the way. Um, you'll note that, that it includes Greece, which is, which is orthodox, uh, nothing to do with Catholicism, a great deal to do with the evil of, uh, quote, familism, unquote, of which more later, if, if you want me to talk about it. We're different, or we have been different until recently. Um, th this is the graph of the um, uh, fertility rate uh, in the components of the British Isles. The red line is, is England and Wales. Uh, the the, blue, the um, dark blue line is Scotland, um, heading, heading for the pits, as you can see. Uh, the light blue line is Northern Ireland. And you can see that in, in, in England, in England and Wales, the birth rate equivalent was equivalent to almost two, really rather impressive, uh, just uh, about 10 years ago, or 13 years ago, uh, around the year 2010. Um, and ever, ever since the baby boom, we've been stumbling along at about 1.7, 1.8, 1.9, something of that kind. Most demographers reckon this is a safe zone from the point of view of population aging. Population aging impose, imposes costs, of course. Um, uh, uh, pensions become more difficult to afford if the birth rate's lower. But if the birth rates are grown to about 1.7 children, then it's thought that, it's, that that is manageable as long as people enter old age in, in, in good health, as long as the age of retirement can keep on going, uh, moving upwards to, to take, take into account longer life, as long as workforce participation remains high, as long as productivity can be encouraged. If not, then not. But, as you see, uh, things are going down in recent years, of which more in a moment. There are two groups of what you might call higher fertility countries. There's um, the so-called Anglosphere, us, uh, the Americans, uh, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, um, and uh, nor Northwestern Europe. Uh, their, their movements in, in birth rates are, are quite similar, as you can see from the graph. And they've been, again, quite satisfactory, wandering along since the baby, baby boom at about 1.8, uh, something of that kind. But recently, recently, that appears to be coming to an end. Those days appear to be over. Uh, we complacently assumed that we would go on having this rather satisfactory birth rate, a bit less than replacement, not much less, but in recent years, things have started to go very, very, very pear-shaped. Um, in the UK, we now have the lowest birth rate ever recorded at 1.49. In Finland, uh, previously a very high birth rate country, and up down to 1.35, which caused the Finns to really scratch their heads because they can't work out what's happening. 
One word for your comfort, birth rates can actually go up as well as down. Uh, this shows what happens in Eastern Europe. Birth rates there fell to very low levels after the end of communism and the collapse of all those support systems which the communist uh, regimes um, uh, produced in order to support the family and childbearing. When those went, the birth rate collapsed. As you see, um, it's, it's then clawed its way back to a reasonably satisfactory sort of 1.5, 1.6. But they too are starting to go down as well. A word of caution here. I've been talking glibly about the birth rate um, uh, 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 being 1.5, 1.7, 1.8. This is a, a measure, forgive my being tedious, uh, called total fertility. It, it's a what-if measure. What if um, uh, birth rates continue at, at, the, same, at the same rate uh, into the future? How many uh, average children will, will, the, will the average mother provide? It's highly volatile. It's very sensitive to changes in timing. If people delay their births, it'll go right down. If they bring their births forward, as in the baby boom, it'll go right up. Um, so it's not to be trusted as any kind of indication as to a long-term uh, uh, final result. So what's going on? Why are these uh, birth rates uh, starting, which were in some cases quite satisfactory, starting to go down? Well, it's uneven to begin with. France is doing quite well. France has got a very satisfactory um, system of, of supporting the family uh, uh, through, through family welfare measures of, of various kinds, which you probably know. And crucially, it's consistent. Um, elsewhere, elsewhere uh, there are all sorts of quite obvious practical reasons why birth rates sh sh should go down in, 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 in the West. Um, the economic crisis of 2008 has not yet played out in terms of, of its effects on people's incomes. Um, Covid uh, was, was in, very destructive. The Ukraine war is, is, uh, it has been and will continue to be uh, very destructive of national economies. Not surprised, and also aging is, is important. As the population ages, um, people in, in middle life not only have their own children to support, they have a bigger burden of, of, of parents to support as well. That puts, puts off childbearing. And in, in, in Britain, there, of course, there are specific problems to do with the, the miserable level of support for, for, um, for, for, for children, uh, for working mothers, um, and, um, and uh, uh, things of that sort, and, and also systematic job insecurity. Perhaps more important, there appear to be shifts in values, not just shifts in the economy, which may have a transient effect on the birth rate, uh, but, but, but value shifts. Um, a, a much larger number of young people now tell opinion pollsters they don't ever want any, any, any children. That may change. It's, it's only an opinion, after all. They haven't yet refrained from childbearing. Um, there's concern, very justified concern, about, about the, the long-term future into which one is bringing children. Um, uh, the problem of, of, of climate change. Um, and there's also, I think, po possibly uh, lower trust uh, arising uh, from, from uh, uh, ethnic diversity in, in countries. Um, trust is very important from the point of view of, 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 of um, people feeling secure about building a family. If that is absent or is weakened, uh, then there is a less inclination uh, to, to uh, produce a family. So, um, nonetheless, <laughs> My colleagues are a puzzle. Um, um, here are a couple of important gurus, Anne Gauthier, a former student of mine, now very prominent, saying that she's scratching her head and doesn't, doesn't know what's going on. Uh, and uh, Wolfgang Lutz, the, the guru's guru in, in Europe, in demography, um, saying that he's still groping in the dark to understand quite why these changes are taking place, despite my uh, efforts at, uh, at offering some explanations. Let's now talk about migration, which is another major component of, of, of this population turnover. Um, here's a graph of, 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 of migration um, into, into Britain from uh, 1964 to 2022 uh, in thousands. You can see that until, about, until the early 1990s, um, on the whole, um, net migration was negative. We lost population in fairly small numbers uh, in net terms to the rest of the world. Since then, it's been increasing and increasing rapidly, and of course, um, it's gone completely nuts uh, in the last few years, with the last figure being, I think, uh, a net gain of 605,000 uh, in one year. 
Um, that was tr that there are special reasons for that, but even so, the general view is it's going to stabilize at about 300,000, and there's no indication that the present government anyway uh, is, is likely to, to try to bring that down. Um, and um, a, a Labour government, which now seems to be more or less certain, uh, does not have any record of reducing migration, at least not since the 1960s. One consequence of that, of course, is the percent of population uh, born uh, uh, abroad is now very high. Um, in, in the 19th century, it was trivial, just a few percent, as you can see from here. It's now uh, risen up to, in fact, 17 percent. This graph is out of date uh, and, and rising quite fast as an inevitable consequence of all that migration. Uh, this is, uh, th that's a slightly more up-to-date graph. Birth rates. It's often said that immigrants have a much higher birth rate th th than us natives. It's only true up to a point. Um, um, the birth rates of, of, of the Muslim minorities, of, of Bangladeshis and Pakistanis, is a bit higher than the average. But if you look at the Indian population and the Chinese population, it's considerably lower. So it's a factor, but it's not a very big one, and it's much smaller than it used to be. It's migration that really matters. This just illustrates that the power of migration, that, that how important different levels of migration are or would be in determining what the population size is going to be. If, and I think it's very unlikely, uh, if migration were, were to remain at the 600,000 of last year, uh, then as you can see from the top blue line, um, you, would, you would see a population uh, in, in Britain of about, um, about 110 million people um, by, by the end of the century. If, on the other hand, there's no migration at all, you have population decline, which is the lowest uh, blue line um, going down to uh, about uh, 45, 50 million by the end of the century. Um, in my view, population decline in the long run is inevitable and will, if we don't adopt it ourselves, it will be forced on us by unkind nature. But that's a different argument and a different talk. The consequences, of course, as you will appreciate, um, are that the population changes. The population of immigrant descent, for, for these reasons of birth rate, for these reasons of, of, of uh, migration, will increase. Um, uh, that of the, um, uh, the, the, the native indigenous population will decline. This is a projection which I made quite a long time ago, about, about 13 years ago, um, showing what would happen uh, if, and, and of course if is the big word here because there's nothing certain about population projections, if for, uh, migration remained at the then level of 185,000 per year, now of course it's higher, um, if the birth rates remained uh, more or less as they were, but with some convergence on the part of, of the migrant birth rates, so they became much more like that of the general population, then this graph shows roughly what would happen. Um, you, you would get uh, uh, the uh, population of, uh, of British, Scottish and Irish origin tr tending towards 50% of the population by, by, the, by the 2060s. Uh, you would get the, the population of immigrant origin uh, increasing and there would be a crossover. Um, I then worked out uh, it, it was a, a 2066. That's far too precise a figure, of course. You can't assign an exact number uh, in, in, in population projections. But nonetheless, that's what the mathematics said. So s sometime, anyway, in the latter, the latter three quarters of, the, of, of this century, there would be a, a, a changeover uh, in, in, in population balance. Um, and, of course, in the younger generations, it will be, be apparent very much earlier among school-aged children, uh, among young workers uh, and all the rest. Um, very important to emphasize that no population projection is set in stone. All depends on the assumptions. Uh, all population projections turn out to be, to a greater or lesser extent, wrong. But this is the, uh, the implication of what's, what's been happening recently. And, of course, uh, recent changes in birth rate and in migration would, ac would accelerate this process, uh, not reduce it. This just shows what would happen without migration. The, the, the top line with the dots on it um, is the, uh, the, the trend of the, uh, the white British population without migration. It would still go down somewhat because the birth rate would be assumed to remain quite low. 
um, the, 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 um, the, the, the uh, increase of the ethnic populations would continue because they have a younger age structure uh, and there's still some uh, differential uh, fertility. But it would be a, a slow process, not like there are the rapid one going on at present. This is much better documented in the US. Unlike here, um, the US Bureau of the Census produces a, a, a set of population projections as to what would happen to the population composition of the US given, um, given um, um, the, the then current levels of birth and death and migration. This is a projection which they produced, I think, in 2010. Um, the, uh, the, the red line is the uh, non-Hispanic white population. Uh, the blue line at the top is the, is the, the all-immigrant origin population, um, his, Hispanics, um, uh, um, uh, Asians, uh, the black population, uh, and, and so on. As you can see, that crosses over at about, uh, about uh, 2042. This is a, a very well understood and very, very well publicized date uh, in, in the United States. They expect uh, that the, the, the white non-Hispanic population will become a minority roughly around uh, uh, two, uh, 2042, not that long in the future. The, the exact year, of course, will, 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 will vary according to circumstances, but that seems to be an absolute future fit accompli. Something similar is happening elsewhere. This is a graph showing the, um, the percent of population of foreign origin uh, in uh, the Netherlands, for example. The, the red line given uh, uh, the then current levels of migration, the blue line given no, no migration at all. You can see how they diverge. Uh, this is a whole a, a set of such projections, all trending to about 30% of population of, of foreign origin or more um, by the year 2050. Um, uh, and uh, th this is absolutely usual and normal and standard now uh, in, in Western Europe. And here's Sweden's last ethnic forecast. I put this separately because um, the Swedes brought these things to an, an end. Um, this projection made in the year 2000 showed the foreign origin population approaching 35% by, you can't see the scale, by about 2060, I think it was. Um, um, but then they felt this wasn't a very good idea, uh, so no further projections of this kind have been made. Incidentally, I, I should mention that uh, uh, it's a great shame that we don't have such projections made officially in Britain. There was one made in 1979, perfectly satisfactory, not terribly controversial. Uh, since then, the Office of National Statistics uh, has declined uh, to follow that example. So, what do governments do about it, if anything? Um, in, in, in Britain, it, uh, not only do they not do anything about it, but there is, there is I think, no awareness on the part of, of governments or, or of political parties as to what the, the long-term consequences of um, levels of migration um, permitted or encouraged uh, uh, primarily for economic reasons are, are, are likely to have. Um, uh, I think the electorate has become apathetic about it. It's been repeatedly promised uh, by, uh, by governments, especially the Conservatives, that there will be a reduction in migration. It hasn't happened. Uh, Brexit, for many people, has been a huge disappointment in that regard. It was expected that migration would go down. On the contrary, it's gone up. Um, those uh, behind uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the Brexit movement, um, uh, Mr. Johnson and others, are uh, were really not terribly concerned about migration um, and are very, were very happy to let it rise and, in fact, to encourage it for economic reasons in order to make sure that the economic damage arising out of Brexit uh, could be mitigated somehow by um, advancing trade with other parts of the world, and that normally means giving concessions on migration, especially to India, as, as we've heard. There's a great deal of self-censorship um, um, in newspapers, in publishers. Uh, to talk about this, it, it tends to be very much a sub rosa. Um, and, of course, there's a, a considerable growth of, of ethnic minority voting, by no means all of whom are in favour of uh, increased immigration, uh, but on the whole, uh, there, is a, there is some level of support there. And one, one is if a tipping point has passed, whereby it's now going to be impossible for this trend ever to be reversed. Well, back to Mr. Javid. So what? Um, I'm so sorry. I beg your pardon. This is this is a sign of population aging. It, it is. 
it's, it's, it, it's a reminder to me to take one of my uh, innumerable pills, which, which I, will do, I will do later on. Um, for many people, it's self-evident. Of course, it's a bad idea if, if the, the, the normal population of Britain is, is, is replaced by a population primarily of, of, of immigrant origin. However integrated they are, however perfect their English, uh, however uh, much taken for granted their presence is in the country, which is to a very large extent. But uh, many people say it's, it's obvious that this is not a good idea. Um, it requires to be justified. It actually requires some arguments, some arguments which are ethically acceptable, some arguments which are economically acceptable, uh, some arguments w which would lead to practicable uh, uh, political responses. And that, I think, is quite a difficulty. Um, it's not been discussed by ethicists. Um, it, it's not been discussed really very much at all. Um, and uh, here, here are some possible reasons for, for, for taking exception to it. Uh, do natives have a priority of immigrants in terms of, of, of entitlement to the country where, where, where they are living? Uh, I would suggest they do, um, but again, it needs justification. Um, how, how, how right is it uh, to, to, to justify uh, the preservation of a group and its privileges? Um, or is it easily, too easily denounced as being racist, as some people uh, would say? What about the question of, of, of inheritance? Um, do the children of the people uh, traditionally living in Britain uh, deserve to inherit a country like that which their parents were born, uh, born into or not? Um, is culture being erosed, er, eroded? Um, what about the erosion of power and coherence? Um, people, uh, the, the, the traditional people of a country may not be in charge of their destiny anymore. On the other hand, um, this may not matter. Um, if, if people of, of immigrant origin who, who come to Britain as, uh, are, are, are assimilated, regard themselves as being British, uh, perform in all sorts of ways, um, economically, morally, ethically, and, 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 else, and, and in other respects, why should it matter that the, 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 uh, their, their origins are, are different, that their colour is different uh, um, when they may speak uh, 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 most perfect English and, and pass, as it were, for, for natives in all respects? Other than their ancestry. This is not a debate which is happening yet, uh, except uh, uh, under the carpet. I think it should do. Um, there are some moderating factors. The things may be slowed down. Um, uh, Eric Kaufman, a very great demographer, in his book White Shift, very courageously addresses the issue of what happens if and when um, uh, majorities become minorities in countries like Britain. Uh, he feels that there is um, some possibility of, of the growth of religion. I don't have much hope for that myself, but uh, that's his, his view. Um, um, there, there tends to be a drift uh, in terms of self-identity uh, uh, from some uh, um, uh, ethnic groups uh, into the so-called white group. Um, there's a tendency for, for, for mothers to, uh, who, uh, who belong to some ethnic group um, to um, label their children um, as, as, as being British or, or white British or at least white. Um, um, that there is the, a considerable growth, a very rapid growth, of people of mixed origin uh, who may identify uh, more with the majority, the current majority, rather than with their, their, their ancestral uh, immigrant origin uh, uh, populations. Here's a projection, I'm sorry that the, it's rather spidery, um, the, the orange line, which you can see rising up right to the right-hand side of the graph, this is the projected population of mixed origin. Um, uh, by, by the end of the century. It, it's uh, looking an awful long way into the future. But nonetheless, it, it, it's only a projection. Nonetheless, um, it does suggest that, that uh, uh, under current trends, the mixed origin population may become the largest single group, uh, certainly the largest single group of immigrant origin and eventually uh, the largest group altogether. In other words, everyone is going to become slightly, or perhaps a bit more, uh, uh, brown. Um, uh, that's what's expected to happen to the white population, the, the, the breadth of the band indicating the, indicating the level of uncertainty, um, and this, uh, the, the, the mixed population. That may well be our future, as, as a famous geneticist um, uh, points out, the future is brown, um, and that may mean something really rather attractive and appealing. 
Um, here we have three people, um, two of whom you may recognise. The chap on the left, you'll, you, you'll know. Uh, the, the chap at the bottom is our uh, champion motor racing dr uh, driver of, of the world. Um, and the, the lady on the right is Miss Albigeois. Um, uh, Miss Albigeois was deposed from her title, alas, because of some minor peccadillo. And I, I often wonder if uh, we wouldn't be lucky, lucky enough uh, for her to claim asylum here uh, against the beastly French. I'm sure she'd be very welcome. Um, I think that is as far as I can take it. Um, I, I, I started off with, with, with a question. Um, I haven't, I think, properly answered it. Um, it will require a great deal of discussion uh, to sort out what to do and how to face this, I think, very likely future. Um, and any comments which you might have to make as to what we ought to do would be very welcome. Thank you.